What is going on everybody? It's your boy St. G back at it with another video. Today we have some interesting practice squad signings that I'm really pumped up about that I really want to discuss because I think this makes the Raiders better. You know, one of the things that happened with the initial 53-man roster was people were people were kind of surprised that we only kept eight offensive linemen. People were kind of worried and kind of scared, felt like maybe the depth wasn't necessarily there. And yeah, technically that was true, right? But the Raiders did bring in some practice squad guys as well. And there are special rules where you can elevate practice squad guys into the active 53-man roster. Now, today we did pick up some guys and re-sign some guys. And the practice squad is not finalized, right? Throughout the rest of today, the Raiders will bring some guys in, kind of talk to some guys, and kind of finalize some things with some other guys, uh, you know, really work out the contract and the nitty-gritty details. But what I want to do today is just kind of go over some of the practice squad guys and really discuss them. First and foremost, Curtis Bolton was officially signed to the practice squad. He's a linebacker that I love. And if you guys watch this video, if you guys have watched some of my past stuff, you guys know Bolton as a guy that I've talked about. You know, I watched his tape while he was with Oklahoma. I was scouting Kenneth Murray Jr. And this guy kept flashing on tape and he looked really, really good. And it's crazy to think because he hasn't really stuck around. Like he's been on the practice squad a little bit. And... I did like him to be on the active roster, but Luke Masterson had a great third and fourth game for the Raiders, and Darian Butler had already locked a spot in, and there just wasn't any room for Bolton, but I do like the fact that the Raiders have actually brought him back to the practice squad because I think he is a good football player. Uh, another player that we brought back is Chase Garbers, the quarterback. This one's kind of interesting because, you know, he's a quarterback, and do we really need a third quarterback? I would say yes, right? You don't want Garbers to leave and have Garbers go sign with someone else. Uh, not only does he know kind of the jargon and stuff like that that the Raiders uh, utilize, but there's some potential there, right? He is still young. He still has a lot in his game. He can continue to develop. Um, never say never about a guy ending up being a long-term backup quarterback, and Garbers definitely has that potential. Uh, Dylan Stoner, once again, has made the practice card. So shout out to him. I don't really want to get into it too much. I don't know how much upside there is with Stoner. Uh, Bamadil Olasini, this one's interesting. Uh, you know, we, we knew when this guy came to the Raiders, he was raw, and he showed that. In fact, I plan to do a film breakdown of his. He was absolutely raw. He wasn't that great on tape. And truth be told, he lost a lot when he had some extended playing time. Uh, he went up against some of the guys that the Patriots have that will rotate in and those guys were, were dominating him especially in the final fourth preseason game but Bamadou Lassini has a lot of potential he's bigger than a lot of people he can move people at will he's pretty solid in run blocking because of the fact that he's able to move people but obviously his pass protection technique specifically needs to be worked on and I think as a long-term development this makes so much sense for the Raiders you know I am positive that uh, the Raiders defensive players don't want to go up against Bamadel Lassini in practice because he's so massive. Uh, those guys are always the hardest to beat. You know, they get their hands on you and they can throw you around. Uh, some people have him listed at 6'9", although the Raiders officially have him listed at 6'7". I don't think the 6'7 is actually true. I think he's taller than that, but who knows? Um, either way, this is a guy that I absolutely love. This is a guy that I'm very excited for. I don't think he's ever going to get called up and be asked to play, but I think long-term development, he's a good player to have. I think he makes a lot of sense for the Raiders. Uh, he is developing at left tackle for the Raiders. That's what he played the entire preseason, and that's where I would want him. Uh, do keep in mind, he isn't very young, and I know people have pointed that out. I think he's only a couple months younger than Colton Miller, to, to be fair. Um, but I still think long-term development, this is what you want. Colton could get hurt in three years, right? And in three years, Bamadi Olasini may be ready to step up for a season. And then maybe you trade him after that, right? Or, or whatever it may be. Um, another guy that I actually really liked is uh, defensive end slash defensive tackle, Myron Tungvaloa Amosa. They have him listed as a tackle on Raiders Wire. Uh, he's played DN for the Raiders, that outside linebacker position. And he looked good. Uh, honestly, um, if it wasn't for Tashawn Bauer just absolutely destroying guys and Cleveland Farrell having his fourth year with the Raiders, he's under contract, I wouldn't have been surprised if Myron actually made the active roster. Uh, the guy really flashed, and I think there's a lot of long-term development here. He needs to get rid of that number 69, looks absolutely ugly for a defensive end. 
Um, but I do like the fact that the Raiders kept him around. He is a guy that's shown some things on tape. Uh, he is a guy that uh, when he came out of Notre Dame, the coaching staff actually really liked him. Now, I haven't done a film breakdown of his. Maybe we'll get to that. We have about two weeks until the actual season starts. He's a player that I like. Uh, another player, Bryce Cosby. Uh, I'll be the first to tell you guys, uh, he really didn't flash for me, but I get it. He's young. He has a lot of potential, especially when it comes to special teams. Uh, he's a smart player. I've heard him speak a little bit, and he knows football. Like He understands it from the mind perspective, right? Uh, when... You know, special teams, for example, when the kickoff team is kicking the ball to the right and you have a backside guy coming, uh, that might be the roamer on special teams. Bryce Cosby may, may be that guy to be able to do that, right? Because he may understand his responsibilities and gaps. You know, there's little small things that go into special teams. And I think Bryce Cosby long term may be a good player for the Raiders. We'll obviously see. Um, he played corner. He played a little bit of safety for the Raiders uh, in terms of alignment. So we'll see where he ends up being. Uh, two other guys. Uh, this one really excites me. This one I want to spend a little time on talking. You know, uh, Jordan Meredith, I believe, is in his second year. And truth be told, I, I, I said this. I, I felt that I wouldn't be surprised if Meredith ends up beating out Les Cotton for the starting position. I said this once recently. And some people were surprised that I said that. And I was surprised when we cut him because Meredith is a guy that I actually really like. He's a guy that I think has so much potential. Of course, he needs to develop, and he definitely needs to get stronger. Uh, Strength-wise, he isn't there yet. Lesh Cotton's much stronger. Lesh Cotton moves people. But Jordan Meredith, from a technique perspective, is better. And I would say that... Um, you know, over the next couple of seasons, we're going to see this shift in our offensive line, right? Well, one of the things people don't realize with offensive linemen is, you know, you don't have a hundred guys in a pool of, you know, these guys are starting caliber offensive linemen. It doesn't work like that, right? You may be lucky to get one new starter on your offensive line every single off season, because the truth is, is the starters don't become available. The starters stick around uh, with, with the team that they're on. But, uh, a guy like Lester Cotton, for example, may not be a long-term option. I, I know sometimes we see these guys, they have a little bit of success. Um, but the thing with Cotton is he still has to continue to develop. Now, here's the thing with Cotton. Cotton has this year to prove it, right? He's going to give up three, four, five sacks, right? It's a fact. He's going to give up sacks. But the thing is, is will he be good enough come next offseason after have played for an entire year and show that he can be? can win right because that's the same thing we saw with andre james andre james struggled at times last year he got a little bit better as the season ended but this is the year for him to prove himself if andre james can't prove it this year if he gives up five sacks he gives up a bunch of losing reps and pressures and all that good stuff andre james will not be the raiders starting center next year and dylan parham will take over right and my point is is jordan meredith in my opinion is a good prospect right if Jordan Meredith gets stronger going into next season, he could start if Lester Cotton doesn't outperform, or at least to a high level, right? Um, I love Jordan Meredith. Plus, I do think he's a guy that every single game, they will call him up and have him be the backup. He can play right guard and left guard. He played both for the Raiders, technique-wise, super top tier. I love the fact that the Raiders brought him in. Finally, Zach Van Velkenberg, the Raiders have re-signed him. I don't know how much there is to his game. I really haven't watched his tape all too much. And he really hasn't flashed. I, I felt like Myron Tungvaloa looked better because he actually flashed. Uh, Zach Van Velkenberg needs, definitely needs to get a little bit stronger. Uh, I will say Zach did drop in coverage a little bit. And I did see those plays. And he definitely moves a little bit better. So we'll obviously see this year how he develops throughout the year. I don't think he's going to get called up at all. Keep in mind, this is not the final list. We'll probably add another four to six guys on the practice squad. Um, I don't think it's going to be any flashy guys, right? But I do think these guys right now that have already signed are the guys that the Raiders really wanted. These are the guys that Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler think have long-term development. Jordan Meredith, Bamandil Olasini, Chase Garbers, right? I think these guys have that long-term development. And I think that's why these guys were first in line to get signed. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. If you did, please consider subscribing, thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.